Yeah, I'll pay you, man. We got to take the banging beers ones, the brew fest, and be like 50 cents. <laughs> no, I'm just going to give them out. Hey, everyone. This is Anthony with uh, Tornado Tag Podcast. And we got we got a really cool show lined up. We're going to be ta- sorry, just adjusting some stuff. We're going to be talking um, a little bit of everything. Talking Outbreak. We got, got some sort of my time. So uh, let's get... One second. Hello? Yeah. Are you serious? All right. All right. So I'll just do the whole intro. So we got a call. Um, we're no longer the Tornado Tag Podcast. Huh? We are now the Tornado Tag Experience. So who the hell was on the phone? I don't know. I, we can't talk his name. You can't talk his name. So, so God damn it. God damn it. So, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, um, mm. welcome to the tornado tag experience. I, I it's got a good, I mean, we got to get all these nice t-shirts and all those great ass stickers. You just got reprinted, reprinted. Jesus. They don't care if you're a champion or not. They're just going to, they'll just change it. They don't care. Yeah. Torn- we are the tornado tag experience now. Why? It happens. It we happens. just spent all this money getting awesome merch. People know us by this name yes. now. Like, you know, it's like, just... and I mean, not to mention Superstar Shakeup, which is going to be ridiculous <laughs> for the next week or two. And now we got Outbreak. We got PBW. We got a couple of great shows coming up in the next two weeks. And we're the Tornado Tag Experience now. Oh. Horrible, right? It, it physically hurts a little bit. It's, it's... It really hurts. You get comfortable with something and they just sweep it away, right? Right. <laughs> this this kind of sucks. I'm I'm not happy about it either. Oh, but you gotta you gotta roll with it sometimes. You gotta go with the punches and just and just you gotta appease the big guy. You know, you gotta make sure everything is is is, pro- is proper and ready to go. By the way, I'm pretty sure Tuesday night you were happy though, even though I called it with the uh, you screwed Brett chance in Montreal. Yes. Um yeah, and and the uh, I think we've seen the full we've fully seen the demise of a certain superstar too. I don't think we're ever going to see him again. No, they they buried EC. He's done. Yeah, like there's no coming back. I told you from <laughs> from day one when he came back to WWE, I'm like he's going to shit the bed and he's going to tuck he, his tail between his legs again and walk away. He didn't even have a time. Legs again. He didn't even have time to to. to uh, to shit the bed like they just like we're never gonna use you right like, they just literally went right at him and said uh uh they just said here go go out there and we're gonna squash you real quick and yeah that's that's it so alexis you're you're asking uh where is everyone tonight so andy um andy he, children he, of bodum concert he's at a concert you know the champ the champ is 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 getting his uh metal fix his his metal fix he's getting his leisure time he's he's getting ready for this saturday's main event defending his title so he will he will not be here tonight um he's gonna he's he, you know he's got he's got the vip he's he's uh flying fly, flying lim, limousine riding jet flying styling a profile, styling a profile. Profile at a rock and roll show tonight. So he paid him about an extra ten dollars for his tickets. When I told him he could have just showed up at the door and paid the door price. He got VIP. He's he's VIP. He's meeting uh-huh. the band. He's uh, because he's a champ. Champs get that. Uh-huh. You know, uh, they actually paid him to show up. I heard. Uh-huh. That's that's the that's the rumor. That's what's going around. That's what I'm starting right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll start that rumor. <laughs> so um, header greater than the band. Yeah, header. I heard that the band was like they're like honored that Header's going to be there, so they they, they put him up in the. In Honestly, the... I thought that was next Thursday. I was expecting him to be here this week. I completely forgot he said next week as in last week. Yeah. So um, let's let's talk a little outbreak. Uh, uh, let's get ex- back to the Hamburg Fieldhouse Honor Autism Awareness. I am mean... I'm a fan of that. I'm a huge fan of the uh, of the um, the ham the Fieldhouse. Um, I'm actually wearing tonight. You're actually wearing the uh, the Outbreak Wrestling T-shirt, which. Um, if anyone from Outbreak is listening, um, I, I, I like those. I'm just putting that out there. Size extra medium, extra medium large. Um, if, if you're <laughs> interested, if if you're if we want to talk about it, um, I'm actually picking up a T-shirt I already paid for via PayPal by a superstar. I'm getting my uh, my Ed House shirt at the show. Um, I'm doing a shirt trade with another superstar, DB Craft, and 
he's not actually performing that weekend, but I also have another shirt I'm picking up. Um, oh, whoa. All right. We got some. My phone's ringing here. Uh, what do we got? Virginia. I don't know anybody from Virginia, Virginia do you? I don't. But, uh, but yeah, uh, and I'm uh, picking up a, a, a... I don't know anybody from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Hang on. Hello? What's going on, guys? Hey. Whoa. Who's this? It's uh, Mad Max. Oh, hey, Mad brother. Max Morrison. All right. What's up, buddy? <laughs> What's going on, guys? What's happening uh, with you? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one calling in on the podcast being the first call this early. Yeah. That's uh, that's because we got this big outbreak show going on this Saturday, isn't that right? That yeah. is correct. A lot of a lot of superstars, a lot of people trying to make a name for themselves. Got a lot of you know they just introduce new titles and uh, they're making new titles. So it's it's the, there's a lot to go for there. Right, but I have a strong feeling you're not calling to shoot the shit with us, are you? Not so much. I didn't think so. What's on your mind, bud? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now. Brian Vox couldn't have picked a better name for this event than Honor because typically I'm out there just smashing for a good time. But this time I've got I've got to defend my honor this weekend. I've got a bone to pick with Mac Mayhem. That's what I called to talk about. Yeah, if anybody wasn't at the last show at the Birdsboro Community Center, you missed a bit of a backstabbing, if you will say. Uh, it was a tag team match, Killing the Business, yourself and Mac. And uh, after it was all said and done, Mac Mayhem kind of put one right in the middle of your back and gave you the bird on the way out. Yeah. And, and, and you know what pissed me off the most about that? Because I've known Mac for at least probably like two or three years now. All right. when I was coming, When I was first breaking into the business and coming up, him and Riot City. I was in a tag team noise pollution. We used to lock horns and we built a mutual respect for each other. All right. Now, fast forward a couple of years and you got two of the best tag team specialists on the mid Atlantic. And you got two of the best at Outbreak tagging together. I swear this could have been something great. All right. You have Mad Max, Mac Mayhem. Everything was going fine until. For some reason, I want to know. Actually, you know what? I don't want to know. He wants to go hang out with Kill in the Business. That's fine. I really don't give a damn what Matt Mayhem decides to do with his time. This That man's been in the business long enough. He's at least grown enough to make his own decisions. But I'll be damned that I'm going to be the uh, – he's going to do it at my expense. Because I'm going to come in there and give him a piece of my mind right between his eyes and you can bank on that that uh that effective headbutt you got right that thing don't quit man <laughs> it was a, a well regardless of what happened with the match a fantastic match if you weren't there um like he said super two, super talented tag teams two super talented tag teams um where we're going at it um back and forth match and and you were finally getting the, the one up and it looked like you were about to seal the deal and then obviously we talked about the betrayal but um yeah. So, is is what's what's the match lineup for this? Is is there is there are we are we going to hear the the what happened here? What's going on, Dave? Uh, As right now, all I know is it's Max and Mac one on one. So you're going to settle it in the ring. That's it. I'm. We're going to go in there. We're going to square up. And I'm telling you right now, I'm walking out with every little bit bit of uh, every piece of Mac mayhem that I can get my hands on. I'm walking out with every piece that I can get, I can sink my teeth into. I'm going to take every piece of skull that I pick out of my skull and I'm carrying it out of the Hamburg field house. I would hate to be a referee in that match and try to keep and try to keep control. And uh, you got to think though, after the last show, you don't think he's going to have his little Seth Rollins partner and uh, Tim, the tool man Taylor. You know what? That's fine. If he wants to bring the rest of the Lollipop Guild with him to watch his back, that's perfectly fine because I never go anywhere alone. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Mm, interesting. I like the way you think. I like that. Um, uh, I, I know I know. Uh, every now and then when they when they come back to the field house, they usually have a trick up their sleeve. Um, I, I, I hope, Hopefully Mr. Vox is watching, but this would be a 
good opportunity to to possibly do a little bit of a street fight. I think that would be a great idea. <laughs> I mean, the field house has definitely seen its fair share of historic moments. Why not have a Hamburg street fight? And I feel the rivalry is perfect for this for this venue right now, especially with this the build up and the back and the betrayal. Would you would you like mm. to get your uh, your payback in a little more an unorthodox one on one match? You know what? Any way that I can get my hands on that guy, I don't give a damn what it is. It could be a street fight, be cage fight, it could be a chicken fight, it could be it could <laughs> be money uh, to see the chicken fight. Yeah, <laughs> it could be whatever it is. Doesn't matter to me as long as we're fighting. As long as I get me a piece of his ass. Trust me, that's all I care about. <laughs> well, we we look forward to it. We look forward to seeing you at the show. Um, you got some cool new merch we've seen. You got some new stickers and, and stuff going on, right? Uh, I have been working tirelessly in the uh, the Max Lab trying to come up with new stuff. I've got new marketing material. I got stickers coming out. I got new photos being printed. I got koozies coming. I got a whole bunch of stuff with my face plastered on it. Trust me, it's... It's going to be cool. We're going to have a whole line of mad swag running around town, and uh, I think everybody's going to be happy with so it. So if you're coming to the show, bring a couple extra bucks because, you know, the superstars all have their uh, their merch stands going and, and uh, definitely support your local wrestling scene and support these guys. We talk about it heavily on this show that these guys are going out and putting their uh, putting their bodies on the line for for entertainment and, and trying to keep you uh, keeping you excited in the seats. So the least you can do is, is help them out a little bit and grab some merch there. So we'll definitely be grabbing something and we'll and we'll have a cool little uh some we just got some stickers for ourselves for our podcast. So we'll definitely hook you up when we see you as well. Preferably some koozies. We do have to drink yeah. here. We like beer in this show. My oh, man. <laughs> I'm actually drinking out of a Montreal Man Randy Savage uh glass here. So uh, uh you know that's that's how we roll on the podcast. Hell yeah. But uh before we let you go, I believe there's something else you want to plug. Didn't you just rap on something? Yeah. Um, yeah, probably about two months ago, I just finished shooting this new movie getting ready to come out from Fuzzy Monkey Productions called Death Board, mm -hmm. uh, di directed by Brad Twig. Uh, independent horror flick story about they find a Ouija board and all hell breaks loose from then on out. It sounds fantastic. Another thing that we do here on the show, we have, we have four shows in our platform. The other one, we do cover a lot of uh, um, movies and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, things that weren't cool in high school. It's basically your uh, pop culture, history, music, movies. We are big horror movie fans on the show. Ah, and it sounds like you're the guys that I need to rap with on that show. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> I might find yourself in... back up in the area. I mean, feel free to sit, plant your bass right here on a chair with us and rap about some pop culture. Oh, certainly. Let's set that up because I am quite the horror fishing out of myself. I mean, I'm sure Tony would love to get you to sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Sorry, I had to step away for a second. If you heard in the background, my dog was going bananas. My The wife is outside talking to somebody, and the dog's not happy that she's not next to her. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did see a little bit about the movie. I'm a huge, huge horror movie fan. Um, yeah, so I, I'm definitely excited for that. And, yeah, when, the, when it does come out, let us know on our end, and we'll definitely plug it and make sure you get some eyes on it. And if you uh, you want to come in and talk about it, we could do that as well. That sounds really cool. I appreciate that. I would certainly love to. Yeah, we have a we have a pretty cool, interesting uh, horror related interview coming up uh, ourselves on interviews with uh, every people. Um, we're actually uh, interviewing uh, Andrew Hubachek, the original Zelda from Pet Cemetery. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's gonna be a really cool one. Have you guys seen the new one yet? I, I did. I seen it on Saturday. We I were supposed I was supposed to go with them, but unfortunately I was not permitted. <laughs> I'm supposed to go uh tomorrow. Is it rad at least? I, I enjoyed it. I, but I'm I'm also a person who it takes a lot for me to dislike something because I'm the type of person that if I can't physically do it myself, I'm not gonna tear down somebody else's project or their work saying, Oh, it's terrible or it's not good. Um they they take everything you need for Pet Cemetery and but they kind of make it their own as well. That's that's pretty much uh, how I'll leave it with there. But we did do an episode on the channels, so after you watch it, um, tune in and, and check out one of our episodes and uh, and you can hear our opinions and and see if you know we hit if one of us hit the, the mark there. 
Oh, uh, very cool. I'm definitely going to do that. That sounds an awful lot like what's going on with this uh, this new Child's Play trailer that just dropped. It I seems think like it looks the same cool. Kind of deal. I mean, yeah, Mark it, Hamill as Chucky is already like stinking with me. Yeah. And he did yeah. you see the new trailer? Yet? I saw it. So he like he can control technology. So they kind of made a modern day spin on it, which yeah. I'm kind of for it. I mean, I, I saw where the guy's trying to remove the info chip, and he just sits up and he's like, "You mother." Yep. Looks, <laughs> I think it looks awesome. I'm a, I'm like I said, I'm a horror movie guy. My wife's a huge horror movie guy. Um, so My wife's a guy, a horror wow. movie fan. I'm not a guy. She's definitely not a guy. I checked. Um, but yeah. Hey, it's 2019, man. Do what you do, dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, so a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Um, speaking of horror movie, and if you're into horror movie merch, um, we, we, we have a really good relationship with uh, Fright Rags. I don't know if you heard of their, that company. They do a lot of really cool horror movie shirts. Um, they're actually having a Easter sale starting tomorrow through Sunday. Um, a lot of good merchandise on a really good sale, so go check them out. Aren't they doing uh, the 30th they, anniversary of uh, Pet Cemetery? They have a whole, well, that's new stuff, so that won't be on sale. Right. But they do have a whole bunch of Pet Cemetery stuff for the old movie for the 30th anniversary. Um, we're actually giving away two pins on our show that they, that Fright Rags was generous enough to you know give to us, and we're gonna we're gonna give them away on the show. Nice, yeah. I love Fright Rags. Christmas time, I bought a bunch of stuff. I got this Sam Loomis hat that I can't stop wearing. Nice, nice. There we go. Yeah, I, I'm a huge. I I love my horror movies. All righty, so uh, we'll we'll wrap we'll wrap that up here. Thank you so much for calling in and talking with us. And like I said, once your uh, once your your projects gets going here and you have anything going on, we did share your 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 page you just made. Um, so like I said, anything you need are and let us know. And anytime you want to call in, you're more than welcome to. Thank you so much. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys having me. See you Saturday, fellas. See you, buddy. Take it easy. Take care. Awesome stuff there. I like him a lot. I, I like Max Morrison. Uh, yeah, he's 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 a guy right up my own alley. I, I love the I love the wrestling aspect of things, and I love what he does. He does have a Champa look to him. Yeah, the, the and, punk rock. Yeah, uh, I love I love his style, his look. Um, his his in the ring, he's super talented. And then also, you know, with the whole he's 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 after he's he's a thing in my own heart, going for the horror movie stuff too. So. Very, very cool. Glad he called in. But uh, getting back to the card before we were uh, interrupted there, <laughs> we have a couple of guys near and dear to your heart making their return. Oh, I'm so excited about this. You have no idea. Chuck and Kyle Payne, the Extreme Rednecks are coming oh. now, break. If, if you've never seen the Extreme Rednecks or know them or just had a chance to talk to them, super, super cool dudes. Um, one of the members of the team, um, I believe it was Kyle, right? Am I, am I, Chuck. Uh, Chuck. It was Jack. I'm sorry, Chuck. Chuck um, he went through an injury. All right, that was Kyle. Anyway, Kyle. I thought you were going somewhere else. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle went through an injury, and uh, and we thought for a while there that the uh, the injury was going to was gonna hold his wrestling career up and that he wasn't going to be able to do it anymore, um, which is super sad because, you know, my first – you know, my, first, my experiences of going to outbreak shows have just been going hanging out with my buddy Steve and – and we gravitated to that team. We enjoyed them. We had a good time with them. Um, so, you know, we heard that when I heard that he was hurt and he might not be able to do it anymore, bum me out. Like, I don't want to see a guy lose something he's passionate about, but he was able to overcome it, come back. And he, they're now they're back to outbreak as a team and they're make and they're coming back, um, you know, to, to take some names and, uh, Hopefully, make a mark that they could win some cool titles soon. That you two almost got kicked out of a show because of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we didn't almost get kicked out. But we it, the possibility of getting kicked out would have been very, very high. Um, <laughs> and I'm glad we didn't because I I built a nice relationship with Outbreak, and that probably would have not have been a good way to start it. Um, uh, and I don't think anybody would have minded. They just probably would have been a little peeved. It, I, I there was a few people that probably thought it would have been funny. <laughs> like who the hell are these two? <laughs> yeah. So, oh, we're we're the, we're the jobbers. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, is me and Steve went to the event and uh, and we I think we had a few to drink um, before we got there, and <laughs> and we walked in and, and we bought the uh, the red uh, the, you know their, their merchandise. So we we went out to the car to drop some stuff off and we cut the sleeves off our shirt. Because because if you're buying a redneck shirt, you have to off. It's like a rule. And then we made the sleeves into headbands. And then we walked around the venue like that. And at the time, I had very, very long hair. I, I kind of looked the part, you know? You like Shinsuke Nakamura if you were to shave the side of your head. Yeah. Um, and then I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody part of Outbreak who maybe might have been new or they didn't really know who we were. But like, yo, guys, um, you guys got to get in the back real quick because it's rest the wrestlers are having their meeting. You got to get back there now. 
And Steve, who's an opportunist, was like, yeah, Tony, we have to get him back for the meeting. And he started walking. And I was like, I'm going to my seat, Steve. I'm not a part of this. And I grabbed him and and, and I shut the whole operation down. But if I was very close and just following him and going with it, but it would have been really fun. I mean, it would have been a great <laughs> backpack. Like, hey, we sat in the back for the outbreak meeting. Where were you guys? Yeah, it would have, oh, been, it would have been a good time. What the hell? Uh, Lincoln Park. All right. Yeah, a little bit. Quick answer that so we don't get monetized. Hello? And then you're dropping a notification. Hey, can I place an order for a pickup? Uh, hello? Um, hello? Yeah, can I, can I place an order for pickup? Uh, who? I'm not sure if you're the right number here. Yeah, who's this? This is the house. Ed House. Uh, Ed, this is Mike Martin. Uh, I think you got the wrong number, buddy. Mike, what the hell? What am I calling you for? I, I should be. Well, while, oh, we have, sorry, while we have you on the phone, we're actually talking Outbreak Wrestling. Uh, oh, that'll work. <laughs> um, yeah, what's, you're ordering food. What are you ordering food for? you got a match this weekend. I was supposed to have a match this weekend. Then Grayloff decided that I guess like he had too much trauma for me kidnapping his little person. <laughs> which <laughs> so yeah. That's what right? So yeah, I did all the heavy I mean it was Corey's idea. You're he's feeding say, the little hey, guy, right? Man. What's that? You're feeding him, right? Yeah, like we but we got him some granola bars and we didn't let him get wet or eat after like nine PM or something like that. But <laughs> so, so you still have him? No, God no. We gave him back uh God, I hope Corey gave him back. I was supposed to text him and I never did. Oh, oh boy, God. Do you realize what you just did? Again, it was Corey's idea. Oh, and he man. even said put him in my trunk. And I go, Corey, you sure this is a good idea? I think this might be illegal. Like we we're just trying to help out Yambot. Yeah, you, you do have a weekend. I'm pretty sure that Voxy put you in an open challenge. We did. Vox, Vox let me know about Grey Wolf. I guess he's got some stuff going on. Yeah, he's probably got a bike. So he's probably got to clean the floor mats of uh, Corey's car because that little dude can't piss <laughs> everywhere. Um, <laughs> he's like a little cocker spaniel, man. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so so I, I told Vox, I go, listen, what if, what if we just do an open challenge, you know, this way? We don't have to put anything together. Like this, so so that's what we're gonna run with. Uh, I made the joke. I go, why don't you know if you want to, you want me to keep working for you, Vox? I go, let's just do every match be an open challenge. I'm waiting to hear back on him yet, and I'm kind of regretting suggesting that to him because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna open challenge somebody. I'm gonna get my ass kicked, and then I'm gonna look like a person who walks into is his house. Well, it depends how you know what depends on mortgage payment is. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to take on a bill. Let's not make it a microwavable meatloaf and uh, look <laughs> order off the ice cream. Nice, nice. Now we were talking about you know obviously. Obviously, when you come to the show, definitely bring some uh, bring some extra cash in your pocket because it's you know these these superstars there got some awesome merchandise. I I have already actually purchased mine from you. I'm excited to finally get my my Ed House um, Ed Hub shirt. Or the, Ed, the strange. Ed? I got the Ed Hub shirt. I had to I'm go actually, with the Ed Hub. It's funny you guys mentioned. I'm actually cutting cutting up stickers for merch now. Nice. Um, and I'm I'm designing some new gear to go with the new shirts. Um, which is again what like why I, I thought I was ordering some takeout dessert because I'm waiting on my microwavable meatloaf to come through. Um, but yeah, no, it's funny that you guys dropped the merch hint there. Yeah, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a ton of new merch for outbreak. So yeah. I'm really excited. And there, it's it's really cool uh, hub. So I mean, if you don't know what I mean when I say Ed Hub, then there's probably a reason you don't. And don't don't go googling it. And the yeah, other one is um, a, a nice stranger why those shirts don't run in, There's a reason why those shirts don't run in small and medium, brother. Yes, you know yes. I mean, but there, I'm sure there is smaller men who who can who could apply. But it's definitely Actually, not a I, child shirt. I wrestled. I wrestled for a classic championship wrestling Saturday. I had a, I had like a 13 year old want to buy one, and <laughs> I was crushed to tell him and his father. That they don't come in that size specifically for that reason. <laughs> this kid's gonna walk in class Monday morning and he's gonna have detention adult... by two o'clock. Yeah, he'll have, <laughs> have detention by you know, if school starts at 7 30, he'll have detention by 6 48 in the morning, you know. In 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 wrestling fashion, though, I'm sure I've served a few Saturday detentions for giving a couple crotch chops in in my middle school days. Mm-hmm. We all we've all been there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, and then also you're going to be unveiling some new gear, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Looks real good. Looks sharp. It feels really good. Um, Does it right up the crotch at all? 
only in the back, which is fine because that's how I like it. Yeah. Yeah. The, for the for the booty award, right? I could. I'm. Not, I think that his, his is probably nicer because like all he does is eat right and work out. But and mine's is more probably, damn sandwiches and milkshakes. <laughs> yeah, your mine probably feels better. His 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 looks better. But mine probably feels better. Yeah, you can definitely rest your head on it and be slight, like a soft pillow. His is going to be probably yes. like a little, little harder. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dame Dame's ass is probably a <laughs> lot more firmer than mine. But I, I think in the long run, like mine is built for comfort. Yeah, it's like when you people know? are like, "Oh, who do you want to lay with at night? Do you want to lay with a dad bod yes. or, 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 or or you know a guy who works out?" The, the dad bod, us 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 soft guys, we're we're nice to cuddle with. We win a lot. Yeah. Yeah, because we're not we're also not out at the gym when you want to cuddle. Yeah, that is very true as well. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all it's all premeditated. Yeah, I that's that's how I look at it too. Every time I want to work out, I'm like, you know what, I'm I'm ruining an opportunity for somebody, you know, like yes. And uh and, and, speaking of stickers, we just happen to get some of our own and we want yeah. to do an exchange. We could do like a sticker oh. trade. Fantastic. So our, our table, I don't know if you've ever seen the podcast set up here, but we have like an eight foot long table that is literally just riddled. It's completely covered like sticker bomb. And then we have a laptop. So, I mean, it would be really cool to have a, a cool Ed House sticker a part of the collection here. Absolutely. Because it's not the size of your table that counts. It's it's what what you do with it. Yeah, what you do with it and how you display well, it. Actually, I think it is the size of the, of the table. Like ours, cause mine is mine's actually pretty small and thin. Yeah. I, I, I could people go. People say it I all could, time, but it takes a long time to get to England in a rowboat. You know. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could go with, I could go with a bigger, thicker table. <laughs> the table used to be black, and we covered it, so that we probably ruined ourselves there. Yeah, mine, mine is black, and it's <laughs> rollboat. It's, it's bad boy. Household name, and a lot of people might not know Ed House has appeared on Monday Night Raw. Yes. Uh, you know, there, there's a rumor going around. Uh, that, that that was the case. And uh, it's about a five and a half year old rumor. Um, I can confirm that it is true. And uh, what exactly happened to you that night? Uh, on, on that weary March night, five and a half years ago, um, I was asked to do some extra work for the WWA. And. <laughs> Is that when you were you were freelancing as security? Yes. <laughs> um, Paul Heyman. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. We everybody kind of looked at that, and uh, you know, it's nice when everybody blows your stuff up about it. But the the takeaway I got from that is that the food up there is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> That's ca- those legendary catering table stories. Well, all uh, that he, catering food he ate, he kind of displayed later on that night. Well, it's not so much the cater, but even like the restaurants up in that area. If anybody's out in the Pittsburgh area, Cadillac Ranch is the best meatloaf and the best pork chops I've ever had in my entire <laughs> friggin' life. Um, we were we were out there, I said, doing some extra work, and it was about 11 of us. And there was one guy out there who I guess had been there a couple times before in the past, real comfortable. You know, kind of walked around the wall and, and the hallway we were in, like he owned the place. And right away, I'm like, "Oh, this is great! I haven't been here for like eight minutes, and I already want to strangle somebody." <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Turns out the dude uh, ended up becoming a really good buddy of mine, and we ended up working our very next show after all of this. I spent the next week in Tennessee, and then I came back to PA, worked a show in Jersey that following weekend. And it turned out to be against this guy. And we were both kind of looking at each other like, weren't you just in Pittsburgh two weeks ago? And and then it was like, yeah. He's like, oh, cool. Who are you working? He's like, I'm working this guy. And I'm like, well, that's me. He's like, well, son of a gun. And we've become <laughs> really good friends since. I love it. Um, the two other guys I was involved in the program with, we've all become buddies. Um, one guy I think is out in the Pittsburgh area, Ben Boone. And then... The main event, Justin Maine out in Michigan. Um, he did some work with Clash. I'm, I'm not sure where else he's at, um, but he's been in a bunch of films, uh, taking some small acting roles in films up in uh, in the old Hollywood USA out in uh, California. But he's, he's doing really well for himself. But you know, it's funny, the, the, the guys you meet and you kind of travel with and hook up with and Facebook is so great. And also the devil. 
Yeah. Um, if you use it properly, it's good. Uh, yeah, but then it's no fun. Mm-hmm. That's you know, very if, true. If you're <laughs> if you're not telling if you're not telling your guy friends you want to lick their buttholes on profoundly, are you really living your best life? That is very true. You you actually cut a very uh, awesome promo the other day um, <laughs> for your last show where you were uh, you you had a very interesting placement of where you you, you did your live your your video from. Uh, it's either got to be the crap or my kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> you're flushing some turds you're ready for saturday i do a lot of my best work in the bathroom you yeah. know it's now is your wife shower. okay with that what's that is your wife okay with that well it doesn't matter if she's okay with it or not that's that's where it gets done brother <laughs> um if you ever want to cut like a, a a tornado tag podcast promo for us and, and you want to do it from the bathroom we're fully cool with that just put oh, it out perfect. there <laughs> it, could, it could be the new intro to, the new intro to botchamania yeah i yes. love it um, the cool thing how you're talking about how you you know you you were on Raw and stuff. Um, it's it's really cool now that like I'm really getting more into the local wrestling scene and I'm trying to put more people onto the wrestling scene. I mean, rest, right now is literally the best time alive to be a wrestling fan. I mean, you have WWE is doing their right. thing, Ring of Honor, New Japan. The indie scene is blowing up. AEW is coming and they're snatching up indie guys left and right and giving people opportunities. The WWE is still NXT are giving indie guys work, so the opportunity for you guys to get snatched at any point in time is, 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 is awesome, you know? And, and there's, you know, we had guys like, you know, last show at outbreak ACE Austin performed and now he's, he's on impact, you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, and he's, and he's flourishing. So we always encourage people like you're not going to pay a cheaper ticket to say the general admission, come see a bunch of really talented guys trying to fight and claw on their work. And, and, and also outbreak, you know, you have a, a bunch of guys who truly enjoy working with each other. It's a good locker room. People like each other. They support each other. And then you have a guy like Ace Austin who just blows up. You know, it's it's a cool environment. And then you see, you know, Monday Night Raw in Pittsburgh or Philly or Wilkes-Barre. And then these guys show up on TV and you're like, and then everyone's like, oh, our buddy's on TV. Like, you know what I mean? It's a really Ed cool. House is a good friend of uh, Laszlo Arpad who ended up in Batista's Legion of the Independence. And, and Laszlo was there. And then um, I'm, I, uh, the time tra- I'm sure. Drawn a blank on his name. Uh, he's a time traveler. His character. Uh, his his he's he's married to uh, Lady Frost. Um, he was part of Batista's crew as well that night, I believe. And then um, Andy, the guy who Andy's rivaling with all the time, um, he got beat up by Braun Strowman. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So like, it's cool that you can see these guys at local shows, and then they they kind of make their cameos on on Raw or SmackDown. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's a good it's a good time. Yeah, we, you you realize too that. I think, especially now, wrestling is not as taboo as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our audience is smarter. Our fans are smarter. Um, some of the wrestlers might be a little bit more stupid, but... And some of the decisions yeah. are stupid. I don't know if you heard the big top of the show. I mean, we did our intro, and then we got a weird phone call. They actually changed our... our, our we got to change to our name. We got, we were told we had to change our name to the tornado tag experience. Like we work, we work so hard to develop our name and, and get our, our, get I ourselves. Mean, if you're watching, I mean, we have this really cool merch, this brand new merch and we got to get everything changed. Yeah. They changed it all up on us. So sometimes, sometimes wrestling, you know, that they don't make the smartest choices. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, the thing I tell people who are looking to get into wrestling, probably much to my chagrin, is that you will never feel as good as you do right now for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. So whatever aches and pains you have, if you have the flu, you know, if you have uh, a, a, a broken this or a torn that or a busted this, you're never going to feel any better than you will right now or the first day you start training. Um, but yeah, like wrestling is is definitely not as taboo as it used to be. There's more people coming forward saying that they, they watch it and not just, uh, I mean, like if it's on, or I'll, I, I watch the, the, the chicks do the bra panties, but you know, now it, it's everybody who has a spot on TV, the people don't see the work that goes into that. Mm-hmm. And Agreed. At, at any point in time, those people can just go and they can go in the ring they can go on the mic they're all on tv for a reason none of those women are there because they're pretty anymore yeah i i I was a i was a firm person that when a a women's match came on tv i skipped it i didn't care 
I didn't care for it. And yeah. like, women's wrestling now is, 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 is li- I know it's very cliche to say, but it's better than it's ever been. And it's not even just on the professional level. It's the indie circuits. It's everywhere. Women's wrestling is phenomenal now. It, it really, really is. Well, yeah, because the women who are on TV kind of spearheading that because of the platform that they're given mm-hmm. have kind of woken people up to the fact that, oh, like they're, they're more than just uh, tits, ass, and spankings. Like, mm-hmm. And then the chicks who, are, who have been busting their ass on the independent scene for a while are sitting there going, we told you so, jackass. Now pay attention to us and, and we'll wow you yep. you know, with, with some razzle-dazzle. We'll put some stank on it. And and people are biting on it. And they're and – they're, they're realizing something that they've seen already for the first time. And it's it's neat when you can lead an audience to that and watch them understand it and appreciate it. And it's going to make everybody better. What's your favorite type of fan? Are you, are, do you like the hecklers? Do you like the people who's like the Japan type of crowd where they're quiet? Like as a, as a superstar, what do you like to hear in the ring? I, I figure like if it, if it's noisy, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, without kind of pulling back the curtain too much, as long as they're allowed, something is going right. Even mm-hmm. if things are going awful, something is going right. The problem that I think most people have is they can't take criticism. Yeah. So when you have folks who, so let's, let's, let's look at this. Pro wrestlers are young guys with good bodies old guys with good bodies. And then those are few and far between mm-hmm. both, both, you know, you've got your ACE Austin's and you've got your, your high voltages. Very few people uh, <laughs> going from fire hall to fire hall. With look six like pack abs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got, you got all the guys in the middle, right? The yeah, guys like Kevin me. Owens. Yeah. Me, me or myself, Ox hog. Yeah. You, you, you're Kevin Owens types. And then you have your, just larger than life guys. You, you've got your Mal Havocs. You've got your Dorian Blacks. You, you've you've got your uh, the Mess Brothers. Yeah, you know, you, well, well, Mark Troy's kind of like normal sized dude, but he's all he's all he's all, he's all chest. Mm-hmm. You know, Mark's just all everything. You know, I think the smallest <laughs> thing on Mark is. You know, I've seen it a lot too with women's wrestling, where where women will try to work a specific style because they think they have to because they're a girl. Yeah, I've seen I've seen larger women who try to do cartwheels and flippy rah rahs and, and roly poly stuff. And I shouldn't really pull that kind of makes bad jokes, but you know, they try to do rolling around reversal. If, if you can just own, if you just own your body and then use that to your advantage, you know, it's kind of why Nia Jax is getting over you. Know, she's, she's a bigger woman. She's this, Probably one of the hottest chicks on the roster. She's like, a I'll very fight. pretty face. Mm-hmm. I'm a few, I'm a Nijax fan. I'll fight anybody who s- speaks differently. I, yeah. Because I'll tell you what, everybody's got their type. But if any one of those women said, you and me right now, let's go, nobody's turning it yeah, down. Yeah, no you one's thrown any of those guys on the bed. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you take what you, have, you make it work. I don't know. It's true. So I guess like to answer your question, if, if, if they're loud, it's okay, but you've got to be able to take the criticism of what am I doing wrong? What can I, what can I work on to get better? And then what am I doing that is working and how can I exploit that? Mm-hmm. And and that can be a tricky subject because everybody's going to blow smoke up your ass. Yeah. Hey, did you see my match? Oh, yeah, it was all right, brothers. Good stuff. Good stuff. No, well, you know, you no that, Ed, I got to ask you, are we years. talking about in the ring or somewhere else? Oh, uh, what do you mean? As far as uh, what you just said, in terms of hey, can you watch? How's my match? It was good. No, no, no. Before that, uh, how was it? It was it good. You lost me too, Dave. I'm not sure. You might have to be a little more vague. I- yeah, yeah. You got you got you to gotta feed me the line. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're getting out of this. I didn't get my, uh, I didn't get my script in there. I get much, a lot. Pretty much, were you referring to Ed House in the Ring or Ed House? At nine o'clock at night, alone with the door shut. Uh, oh, oh no! This is at House in the Ring. Yeah. Um, right. You know, you, it's you, you got to figure out what. You got to figure out what works. You got to be able to take that on the chin and and own it. And yeah, I I was trained as I saw a lot of my time putting your you put your heart your soul into your picture and you think it's all good. You got your 
your colors all matched up and then you take it in and you pin it to the wall and you're just sitting there waiting to have everybody tell you how good it is. Mm -hmm. And your professor looks at it and he goes, uh, and he's thought about, have you thought about turning it upside down? Yeah. And you're like, no mother effer. Like I just put, I just put a whole bunch of work into this. Like tell me it's great. And they're like, Hey, it could be better. And that's tough for people to hear you know, that, that they're not, that they're not good enough. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's going to, it makes people end up or it breaks people. Yeah. You know, and I, I think it's, and wrestling is a little cutthroat. You know, everybody wants, everybody wants that Robbie Radke and he had her spot, but you know, do, do they really want it? Now, let me they, ask you they, with the main event coming up, does Robbie Radke deserve this spot considering how he earned it? I think Robbie Radke's a freaking jabroni. I think he's a scumbag the way he got it, but you know what? But he's got the spot. Right, yeah, he, he got so it somehow. We can't, we can't, we can't take that away from him. He did what he needed to do to get the spot. Like the guy had the balls to do what he did to get what he wanted, and that's the other thing that a lot of people don't have. Who, so, who's somebody on the on the roster that that that's got your attention that you think has the opportunity to, to be something big right now that maybe doesn't have that spotlight? At the house, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I well, like it. Even the you know what, honestly, you and the big games are best friends. Are you still wanting that intimidator title? I'll take anything that comes my way. I mean, I, I, I want the problem with me is that I'm very secure where I am in my <clears throat> career, mm -hmm. right? At the same time, I know that it's not going to take much for me to get what I want. The problem is, is am, am I willing to do what it takes? And sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm not. If, if it's not fair to me or my family to do what I need to do to get what I want, then I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But if it's what I want and I want it now, then yeah, you know, look out because mm -hmm. when the red light goes on and the people are in the building, I'm, I'm not, not that I want to toot my own horn, but I've been doing this almost 13 years. I, I am, I, I guess what you'd call an old dog in the, in the, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm a little bit of an old dog in the outbreak locker room. I am not to be trifled with, though. You know, we ain't going out to pasture anytime soon. And ain't nobody taking old Yeller behind the shed. You know, telling little Timmy to close his eyes. You know, I'll, I'll bite the hand that beats me. I'll beat the balls off anybody who tries to put me down. The problem with that is, is there's consequences for it. And it comes a time where am I willing to handle the consequences? Yes or no. And those kind of answers is, you know, only only time can give you the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. um, more specifically, guys who are not me, who I think are, are are ready for that next step, honestly, could be anybody in that locker room. But yes. are they going to put themselves in a spot where, oh, gee whiz, uh, I, I, I could do this, but I might get in trouble by Ryan Vox or Ryan Vox might fire me. So what? So go work for Rob Noxious or go work for Tate Hammer. Go work for uh, you know Kevin Murphy, or go go work down in you know WDWA in West Virginia or Nova Pro in, in you know Fairfax, Virginia. There's plenty of places out there if you want it. And then when that guy wants you back, you rub your nose in it, you up your booking fee, and you come the f off. And if he still wants you, he still wants you, you up your booking fee a little more. You know, you, you just you, you gotta get you gotta get some some spunk in you and go after what you want. I, I don't think there's a whole lot of people who are willing to do that. Um, um, I really like looking at that locker room. I really like Tyler Ash. Yeah. I really like Ian Bush. Mm -hmm. I really like Mad Max. I love the, uh, the extreme, the hardcore rednecks, the extreme rednecks, um, Kyle Payne. I'm, I'm huge fans of those guys. I love them. Big best. bad man in pajamas. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a lot of depth and talent in that locker room. And hopefully those guys can kind of figure out where they're headed and then just beat the balls off anything in their way. Yeah. There's, there's really, there's nothing, there's nothing stopping anybody except themselves. I think the sooner certain people realize that the better off that, that they'll be. The only thing that they don't realize is when they start to do that, people notice it. Mm -hmm. So when one guy does it, it builds up the confidence of another guy and he does it. And then the next thing you know, we're all out there trying to outdo each other. And then what happens? Business picks up, and now everybody's in high demand. 
And now we're all getting more work and we're all we're all getting more ring time. And this guy's going here. This guy's going there. Well, I want these two at this show. Boom. Ryan Vox puts them over here. And then the next thing you know, everybody's flourishing and everybody's doing better. Mm -hmm. There's too much us for it's always going to be there. There's people that we are loyal to, to a fault, no matter how much wrong they do us. Um, wrestling promotions, spouses, significant others, family members. But the, the more that we can kind of put all that crap to the wayside and take care of each other as wrestlers and a whole, you know, we call each other brother all the time. But the more we can really appreciate your time, and I, I think this one on the card that you're looking forward to now after you get. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Ed House versus uh, Robbie Radke for the Outbreak Championship. <laughs> so you're I'm saying you're saying Robbie's beating Andy? I'm look, I like Andy Header, but he's Header. Here's the thing about Header. Header is like the Owen Hart of Outbreak, right? Header is your fun-loving, charismatic, you know, uh, rock and roll, sex pistol, mamma jamma, you know. I know he's got what it takes. The question is, is does Andy Header want it? Does Andy Header want it the way that Robbie Radke needs it? Like, Robbie Radke needs to be champion the way that uh, plants need sunlight and air. And Ed yeah. House needs dessert. Yeah, <laughs> when Ed House needs milkshakes and big booty bitches is the way that Robbie <laughs> Radke needs. <laughs> I've, I've never seen a dude, I've uh, never seen a dude who feels like he needs to be champion more than Robbie Radke. And this is coming from me. And I am, all, when I get in that zone and I get in that mood where I want what I want, and damn it, I want it now. He's kind of got me beat. If not, we could be twinsies on that. But Interesting. There, there is not another dude, I think, in that locker room who needs to be champion. But does Andy Hedder want to continue to be the champion more? That's yeah. what we we'll find out. We're, we got it. Andy's, so you're saying Andy's got to dig because, uh, you know, Robbie's bringing it. I'll tell you what. If, I, I don't know if it came through yet for Andy, but if he has that Spider-Gwen gear. It did. He's gonna he debut does it. have it. We'll debut it on Saturday. I say if he wears that, then I don't honestly I don't care who wears who wins the damn match. I just want to see that gear in action. Yeah, that looks super sharp. <laughs> <laughs> but the Ed, thank you so much. And anytime you want to call in on any of our podcasts, man, even if you want to talk main roster or anything with us, man, you're always welcome. Awesome job today. Excellent. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I'll see y'all Saturday. See you Saturday, you. brother. Don't forget to order your dessert. Buy my merch. I need money. <laughs> Buy those shirts. Thank, thank you guys. See you later. See you Saturday. Yep, yep. One of my favorite talks with the wrestler of all time. Well, then, after all that, <laughs> I think we got to replenish. Yeah, go get some beers. Uh, all right, so, Ed, that was awesome. If if you if you're an outbreak fan and you enjoy, Same. huh? Same. Yeah, if you're an outbreak fan and and you like hearing, you know, just a, a raw conversation, that's that's one of like that's a legit interview on our show. That was good, man. I I really enjoyed that. Ed Ed definitely got a lot. Of brownie points for me and he shed some light on the title fight that i didn't even think of you know we love andy to death on this show but he's you know he's saying from an outside perspective that andy it is andy's got a dig for this one does They're andy wrong. truly want it i mean andy boy here at tornado tag but he brings up a good point he does and, and you know what and the owen hart when he said it you kind of gave like a oof face but but i always seen owen as the guy who who never really got that chance he never got it but he so deserved it you know what I mean? And Owen was kind of like always like, you know what? I'll take the back seat because my brother deserves it more than me. But nobody on the planet deserved it more than Owen. But he kind of always let someone, you know, use him as the piggyback. Right. So it was a cool analogy there. I really enjoyed that interview. Thank you so much, Ed, for doing that. And uh, a great, great talk. If you're in the chat and you listen to that, uh, that was awesome. Please feel free to leave your input. I mean, any input is good input. Yeah, that was great. I, I love that a lot. That was a that was a good one. Um, so yeah, any what else we got to talk about on this card? We already talked grudge match. We talked um, open house challenge. We talked a little bit about the main title with Andy and, and Robbie. Um, 
match I'm really looking forward to, I think, is is can be a match to steal the show, is Ian Bush versus Dame. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be a great match. I mean, it's not – I want to say it's more of a clash of styles, per yeah. se, because Ian's very mat-based, really technical, and Dame just loves to fly around that ring and yeah. do what he and, does. And Ian is kind of like – Ian Bush is kind of like the guy who he described as Robbie. He mm-hmm. wants it. He's hungry. Um, and they're both they both have similar interests with opponents at Outbreak, where they're both coming off matches from Cortez and coming off losses from Cortez. So you know it kind of puts them. Th- this match is kind of puts you in a picture of who could be that next guy who can possibly go for the title or can can, can jump themselves closer to that 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 next ch- you know the next rung on the ladder. Absolutely. So that's going to be a very, very interesting match with some really, really talented superstars. And I know we uh, quoted on him there in our conversation with Ed, but Yams, the working man, his first Intimidator title defense against Rex Savage. Okay. okay. And uh, he comes off of Project Mayhem. He's one of the big, big hosses in Project Mayhem. And this is just going to be a war. You, I mean, if you're going to go against Yams, you, you better bring it. That guy, that guy is... Uh, he works as hard on this on the side as he does in the ring, and you're not he's not gonna be a pushover. And you, you better bring your A game if you're going to get jam. Um, right, it's coming in now. Uh getting yeah, there. All right. So um cool thing about maybe maybe a little hint of something we got from Ed that I maybe I'm just reading between the lines is Ed, Ed House kind of saying that he'll uh he'll do it he'll do what needs to be done, regardless of who what what people think about it to uh to get that shot at the title if he really wants it. So it's pretty much just on his terms. And if he wants it, regardless if you're a buddy or not, he will go for that title. You know, interesting little uh, hint maybe from Ed there. A lot of fun, a lot of fun on the show. So uh, we have someone coming possibly through in a second here. We're going to make a quick phone call and see what we get. How's it going, everybody? Oh, Ooh, I've heard this voice that's before. A, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a familiar a, voice. That's a very familiar voice with the podcast. So we're here to talk about outbreak, huh? Yeah, we, are. We're, we're, we had a lot of cool stuff, man. <laughs> well, funny thing about that is I don't actually know what I'm doing at outbreak again. So this is the second show in a row. I'm coming to this place without a plan. So I'm sure Vox is listening. I'm sure fans are listening. And I'm sure people are curious as to what's going on tomorrow or Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Forgot I mean, you started. didn't really have a plan last time, but poor ice cream man, uh, did not end well for him. I don't think you're going to see him at this show either. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if we'll see him for a long time after what you guys did to him. Yeah, so I guess the plan this time is to do the exact same thing as someone else who decides to get in my way. So you're pretty much you're pretty much challenging Vox that if you don't start getting you some competition, you're just going to take it. And that's all wrestling should be. I'm coming to this place that I've been at since day one, and I've got no word on what I'm doing. So I deserve a fight, and I'm going to make one if I don't get one. Mm-hmm. And we were talking kind of about you know Ian Bush and Robbie and and uh, Dame. You know, you know, at one point in time we had a triple threat match for la- for the ladder to you know, in the ladder match triple threat for the title that you know DB uh, Robbie and Ro- and Andy were part of. Andy walked home with it, then went against Dame. And then now Robbie's getting his shot again. So this is, you know, kind of bypass right over him. You, yeah, DB may be a little uh, upset because he's kind of getting getting pushed out, you know, looked over, and he's he's sick of it. See, I don't, I can't say that I'm not in this fight to win some gold, but uh, I've got bigger, I got bigger business to attend to than having to worry about what Andy Hedder or Robbie is doing, but. I'm not going to overlook the fact that I've been jumped because I'm going to make a name for myself one way or another. And it's been shown that the last show, if I have to end another person's career, I'll end another person's career on Saturday. So you're saying that the materialistic things of titles and golds don't always really appease to you. You're looking for something more. Uh, you're looking for something bigger. Some, some, some more, that's, things, more that's, significant. That's artificial. That, those things, they're fleeting. They're passing. I, I want the sense of mind that I'm better than everybody else and I'm know that to my I, I know that myself but i need to continue beating everybody like i have been mm-hmm. to prove that to everybody else so the thought of winning a belt like i said it, it's fleeting like you can hold that belt but you're gonna lose it if i beat down everyone like you saw me do at the last show 
Who's going to stop me? I don't need a belt to prove I can beat everybody. I just need to do what I did last show and do it again in this show. Your your crew look very impressive as well. Your your followers. your followers are getting bigger and bigger, and 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 you're 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 recruiting some uh, some talent there. Yeah, and as you saw the first time I came to Outbreak, uh, I've got them everywhere. No one exactly knows who follows the word of craft. It's could be anybody. It could be the person sitting next to you in your seats. It, it actually was be, somebody right next to me. Be anybody jumped over jumped over the barrier, and I was like, "What <laughs> is going on?" Yeah. But, you just uh, you yeah. displayed you displayed a little bit of a cool uh, um, deer mask deer mask last show too that was pretty impressive a little, days, a little creepy I mean he left it right next to me <laughs> yeah and thanks for watching because I'm gonna leave that with anybody yeah so, <laughs> now we were that talking mask is important we were also talking with Ed and a few other superstars you know we always say bring bring some extra cash because we got merch um, we're actually you know. In, in professional sports and stuff, you always see people doing jersey exchanges where you do a trade off. We're here at the podcast. We're actually doing our first trade off, and we're going to be doing it with with this gentleman here. Yeah, and I'm glad to be trading with you guys. I mean, I keep trying to put out better and better merchandise every single time. And uh, actually, right now on my Facebook, I'm running a little thing where I'm trying to figure out what my next shirt design is going to be. I've been throwing stuff out there. It's just uh, a little difficult to figure out what I'm going to do next. Yeah. Now, DV, I know you're a big Pops fan, and I'm not sure if you're watching right <laughs> now, but if you see over my shoulder here, yeah, I got somebody two pops. here happened to get a uh, very signature autograph that he's been like creaming over since he got it. Yeah, I have I have my first autographed wrestler pop. I uh, my wife went to uh, uh, Horrorcon, Monster Mania, Monster Mania, and uh, my favorite wrestler of all time, uh, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, is there. So I have. I have the Walgreens oh, exclusive old school HBK with the mullet autographed uh, pop. God, that's that's actually really cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm breaking kayfabe right now. By <laughs> like <laughs> well, we don't really care about kayfabe on this show. Yeah. We just like to talk wrestling. And uh, speaking of which, where can we expect DB Craft after this Saturday? Oh, so after Saturday, because um, I've just moved into a new house, so I've got to really just kind of get this all settled in but after saturday my next show is the 27th so that's next saturday mm -hmm. yes so i'll be in uh delaware actually because uh i'll be at rampage which is kind of a funny thing because the story behind that is i was there for their very very first show and then i was just gone and now i'm here for i don't know it could be their last show i don't know what it is i mean it's the final shot so yeah i, I was there very first show and now here i'm coming back to the very last show so it's kind of like circling back and just ending a chapter or starting one depending on what goes on at this show mm -hmm. yeah and, and uh i'm sorry go ahead I, I was gonna say back to the pops actually at the last show in uh where the heck were we what was that gymnasium where was birdsboro. it birdsboro birdsboro yeah birdsboro yeah i really like that place by the way so uh actually during that show i don't know if you noticed or not like when uh mustache club or kings of mustache Tree came out they actually had old uh old db uh, uh drew bronson well i forgot my old best <laughs> i don't know if you noticed that they had that old gear we actually did a, a pop exchange so i left that show with like mm, like 13 or 14 pop figures just nice yeah well some of them are really good i actually think uh the old champ andy header for giving me a stack of them too yeah well, uh, I'm not sure if you're watching or not, but all this nice stuff on the table here, somebody happened to uh, pawn off a good bit of his pop collection yeah. to start this podcast. This this podcast was bought and paid for by Pop Vinyl. <laughs> and then, I don't know, and then maybe they'll start uh, featuring you guys on there. Yeah, I mean, I... Especially I now the Shawn Michaels one back there. You just need to get more wrestling pops. I, I, you, know what, I, you know what I'm going to do one of these weekends? I'm going to go take some pictures, and I'll, I'll show you. I still have pops, the ones I refuse to let go of. Like, I have... Uh, I have almost all of the Pulp Fiction set except for um, I don't have Jimmy, which was Quentin Tarantino's Jimmy. character, but I and I don't have the exclusive ones. But I have you know I have I have Mia, Bruce, uh, Julius, and and uh, and Vince Vega. I have I have some of the Breakfast Clubs. I have a bunch of assassins. Like so, I have a few sets that I still have that I didn't sell. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I sold a couple of them. I, I I sold a Mr. Freeze that was exclusive. That was that was like almost a hundred dollar pop. I sold a bunch of really really good ones and. 
and I did it just to, you know, fall. I, I, I enjoyed doing this and, and I followed my dream and I went for it, you know? Yeah, I've got a, I got a ton that like I, I take pictures of all the ones that I have, but I've got a ton that I have not like taken out to display in the off chance that I like ruin them or drop them because mm -hmm. I drop a lot of things. But uh, at the last show, I actually got an entire set of uh, Shaun of the Dead, including the exclusives. Like, oh. and each one of them is like forty or fifty a pop, and yeah. then I got like half the uh, or like the original X Files pops. I so, sold, like, I sold a Fye exclusive Monster man and then after i saw price it skyrocketed yeah well my biggest regret may have been selling the pink truck cm punk when i had that yeah now it's like 460 some dollars i have a winnie the pooh that's like a 250 dollar pop yeah man i don't even uh i haven't checked my little funky lab last i looked i I think my most expensive one may have been a chase of some sort, but I don't exactly remember which one. So I've got a few of those, but I'm in the hunt right now for the office ones. I've got like 13 pop figurines pre-ordered or bought yeah, already. The office ones I'm, I'm definitely interested in. But okay. obviously, I'm better huge... hurry up and get them because everywhere I've gone is like sold out all their sets. Yeah, I'm a huge office fan, but I, yeah, I, I'm well, just trying not to jump back in that pop phase because there's still more stuff I have to buy for this podcast. <laughs> man, you gotta get them. They're, they're selling Toby, man. You gotta get Toby Flenderson. Yeah, I, I, I want Kevin spilling the chili. <laughs> uh, they, they have they have Kevin. I think that's his pop. Yeah, he's spilling the chili. Yeah. yeah, I've got all of them pre-ordered. I'm hoping to get the the uh, the gym chase, the nice. whole punch gym. Yeah. But uh, and I'm also I mean speaking of the office, I was also pushing for that whole office pro wrestling thing in Scranton. Okay. I'm really hope that go and i mean if anyone's got any leads who's listening to this about like venues in scranton that are actually booking uh, like message me because that'd be really good andy works for uh backbreakers up there actually they yeah. just got a brand new venue uh they're looking to get a lot of new stuff going up there shit if anyone from backbreakers would like to run a one-time office team professional wrestling show <laughs> I, I promise you i promise you it'll sell because yeah. everyone fucking loves the office if I could get Chili's involved, like that'd be amazing. Just... <laughs> Dundee's, yeah, <laughs> yeah just, uh, that's that should be the belts. That should be the belts. The belts should be Dundee. I agree. Now, yeah. are you a fan of uh, it's always sunny? Yes, yes. We actually uh, had a bang of beers a few weeks ago where we had uh, some two. exclusive beers. We had two always sunny beers. Jesus, I we need had, to come up to you guys. We had Cat in the Wall, I need to just I need and we to had just Thunder Gun Express, to Pottstown or whatever. Yeah, Pottsville, Pottsville. You're Pottsville. always welcome. If you ever want to come on a show, we're always here. <laughs> But yeah, you Cat in the Wall and cool Undergun Express. Yeah, they were, they were good Two beers. limited edition cans that the guy graciously parted ways with for us. I think I might have one Cat in the Wall left. Ooh. I'll have I'll have to come up and bring custom pops. <laughs> I want to get a custom pop made for the show. Um, I, I know a guy, uh, David Cole. He's on uh, Facebook. You could probably find him. He makes really good custom pops. Really? Because I think he did the uh, I think he did the gym mat for uh, uh the, the ring mat for uh New Japan when they came here. Nice. So nice. He, he does. He does really quality stuff. It's Dave Cole, I think. You, you'll find him. He's a my Facebook. We got in one of our cool high school shows, and we'll just talk pop. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's <laughs> that. Like comic books, video games. I just got it. Up. He'd be perfect I for just, Wednesday night. Yeah. Yeah. Have say, you I seen some of the comic books that we post on the Sega. on the Instagram page? Say what? Do you have you seen some of the comic books we post on our Instagram page? No, um, you send me a, like, a link after this yeah, call. Yeah, search, search on Instagram, interviews with everyday people. Um, we share some okay. comics on there between our between Andy and Ben that are insane. Like, Ben brings some comic books that I, I tell him, like, do not make, don't leave these, let, don't let these leave your house. Like, first appearance of Mysterio autographed by Stan Lee, like, 8.5. Graded, already sealed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, see, I, my collection is not that great. I got, like, a thousand some odd books, but, like, I think the most expensive one I have is like five hundred dollars. Like that's as high as I've gotten. But it was on accident. I bought it because I like Spider Man, and mm -hmm. it just happened to be a variant that was like really expensive. So, well, but I've uh, got stuff from like my childhood too. So I got like old ass Daredevil books. Was it two shows ago? Ben brought his uh, Avengers book, but he had a. Uh, it was an Avengers comic, but it was it was Bob um, Camp, the Ren and Stimpy artist, did the Ren and Stimpy characters as the Avengers. It was an ex it was an exclusive <laughs> cover. That's a that one time was, only thing. Yeah, it was only done that one Powdered time. Powdered Toast Man was Thor. Yeah, and Jeez. Log was Iron Man. 
<laughs> yeah, you got to check yeah, it out. So a lot what, of cool you stuff. Said these like are on there. Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesday nights. Yep. Same time as now is that we do with the wrestling one, but it's on Wednesdays. All right. Well, like I said, I uh, I, I I talk a lot of vintage video games because, like I said, I just uh, I got lucky and found a uh, 16-bit Sega, like a original 16 Sega. You need and, to like, tune in on Wednesdays. You will fit in perfectly with that. Yeah, show. and I just found. <laughs> I'm looking for. Oh, so if anyone's listening who has old Sega games, hit me up because uh, I'm looking for Lion King. Ooh, right now, all I, have I think I actually Park have it at my house. Ooh. Shit, let me borrow that. <laughs> you can have. It's, it's like really hard game to beat. Yeah. So so was Aladdin. So if anyone else has Aladdin, hit me up because nice. that game was the best. You should go look at this thing that we 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 um, we do a lot of unboxings for. It's called um, uh, Video Games Monthly. Um, the, I think I saw Header post something about that. Yeah, yeah, we do unboxings all the time. It's uh, thirty-four dollars a month. You get up to four games, depending on your subscription. You get a one-up. You end up getting five games in your box and a little freebie toy. Uh, we got frisbees. We got pocket knives. Yeah, cool stuff. Out. Yeah, check <laughs> so that do out. You You'll like definitely choose the it. systems you have, and they give you stuff, or is it it's just a, random? You, ch- you choose the systems you want, and then you make a checklist of games you already own, so they won't send you those. It only goes up to PS3 and Xbox 360. Though. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really cool. I might actually have to do that. They do like Game Boy games and stuff too. Yeah, they do a bunch. Yeah. Shoot. All right. Well, I mean, now I have to call you guys on Wednesdays. Call in. Or send me a message. I'll get your personal <laughs> number. This quickly went from me cutting a promo to me like <laughs> talking out. like a regular guy. I, like, I love it. I love it. it. Now everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, we have no fear of DB Craft. Fuck that guy. He just talk to video games. <laughs> you He's fear you, you goddamn better well fear DB Craft." <laughs> but uh Fear me, damn it. But uh we do we did get a bunch of new stickers just in, so we'll definitely have to do a sticker exchange on Saturday. Yeah, I got some stickers yeah, yeah, for absolutely. you. Yeah, we got some and, uh, um, stickers. I'll, I'll have this I'll have this shirt there. Uh and like I said earlier, if uh people who are listening and you guys as well, like if you saw all the images I've been posting, like I need help choosing my next shirt because I have no idea what I think the heck I, I think across do. the back shoulder is saying follow me with your eyes would be cool. With the like, with the uh, with the, the 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 moth or whatever the you know I mean your logo. Oh yeah, the, I haven't done the death head thing in so long. I need to do something. Or even like the deer head. Do it like the deer head that you have made on the front and on the back. Just say follow me. I've actually been looking for ways to try to like cheaply make those masks so I yeah. can get them like wear take a picture. And I think it started at outbreak at first, bro. Yeah, I, I was one of the free people to wear it. You let me wear yeah, it. Yeah, I say because from there, like I think like maybe ten or twelve people since then have worn the mask or asked to wear it. Yeah. Like wrestlers and just regular people too, because they don't like they, they think I I don't know what they think it's made of, but like I tell them all, I'm like, oh man, this is just news for like that's all it is. It's just newspaper and like a really good resin. Yeah. But it's uh it's actually starting to break a little bit, but well, it's I, cool. I he's actually in the chat watching. I know a guy who does 3D printing, so maybe you can get one 3D uh, printed. Yeah, actually, you know, that was my first uh like idea about it, and I was looking for places to do it. But everywhere I looked, they were all just like really small, like like scale printers that they didn't make anything big. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, and, hook uh, up, I'll hook you up with his information and we'll uh, and maybe you guys can work something out. That'd be awesome. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for calling in and, and maybe we'll see you more. We'll hear, we'll hear from you more on Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesday. Definitely. All Let right. Me, uh, just give me a time and I'll call. All right. Sounds good, brother. Right. We'll see you Saturday. Take it easy. Right. Thank you. See you guys. Love that guy. Uh, DB Craft calling in. Uh, I knew I was gonna get him to break kayfabe, <laughs> <laughs> cutting a little promo, and we got him to break kayfabe. Yeah, it's, anything can happen here at uh, the Tornado Tag Experience. Tornado Tag Experience, yeah. This, th- this is killing me, man. I, I can't keep doing this. Yeah, it, it's, this, it's just I, it's getting I, out of control. I can't keep doing this. Yeah, it's just, just uh, it's just oh, the, the experience. Like, we work so hard yeah. for this name, and right? You're just gonna take it away from us like they didn't deserve it, you know. He who shall not be named is honestly killing me right now, and I. I don't know if I can keep doing this show. Really? You're going to quit on me? Uh, we worked so hard on the name, the merch. I can't I can't promote a new name after we just put out all this money for all this stuff. <laughs> As part of the business, I man. mean, we got the banner made for the backdrop. Don't you dare. Don't. Hey, hello? Oh. Bad things happen when you answer the phone. Are you serious? Why? It makes no sense. Why did you have right. to answer the phone? All right. All right. All right. You're the boss. Uh, you run the show. All right. Do I want to know? All right. Bye. Do I want to know?
We are now so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now just known tornado. <laughs> <laughs> What? They dropped everything else. It's just tornado. We're really? Just, yeah. I can't keep doing it. I mean, <laughs> I'm done. I'm out of here. We're just tornado. Uh, it's just like I mean, it's working for Mus- for a uh, Musta. I mean, Ali, and 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 Cruz. Uh, or is it Apollo? Is it who, who called you? <laughs> who was that? Seriously, I can't say his name. We'll get people. Riders will get fired. It, it gets it's fines. Out, <laughs> it'll be out of control. Why? Why? Like, at least we got rid of the experience. Yeah, but yeah, just we'll find just tornado. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes uh, little is better. You know, we've been working with that our whole life. House seems to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it has to disagree. So, who do we got? Who do we got lined oh, up here? Let's see. Very fun show. We we're, we're supposed to talk superstar shakeup. I don't think that's happening. We're gonna wait for we the next week. We might have a little bit of time to do that. We just got to keep this one quick. All right. We might, I mean, it depends. What do we got here? Oh, it's a Pennsylvania number. It is. I'll let you take over here. That means someone's there. Parts unknown. Hello? Hello? Mr. Martin. Oh, this not all Del Mar, the crew of blood. Oh, what do you want? I'm just saying, I bet you thought I didn't get your number. This just shows the amount of reach. The crew has the great captain decapitate and all of our crew members. And me and the little tornado tag team podcast. Whoa, 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 whoa. We just changed it. We just it got the the name just got changed twice. You say you've been watching. <laughs> like, literally, we got a phone call at the beginning of the show saying we are now the tornado tag experience. We literally just got off this phone again. Now we're just tornado. Yeah, they dropped the whole name. It's just it's, it's strange. To be honest, I don't really care. All I have to say... (laughs) I mean, that kind of sounds like your title, but... All I've got to say is that as the IOWA champion, that's the International Oceanic Wrestling Association champion, this Saturday night, I will destroy Chris Slade in that ring. And as we all remember, you and Chris Slade had a very uh, intense battle in the Battle Royal. Yeah, yeah, you guys... Who is he? He looks like Killmonger from Black Panther. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure he did almost kick your teeth out of your mouth. You're a funny guy, too. A comedian. Absolutely. I'll take that title off your hands. Ooh, the guy from commentary is getting getting chippy. First, first of all, why don't you just stick behind the announce table where you belong? Secondly, that championship can only be defended on a ship or an island, and currently I am undefeated with 46, you heard me correctly, 46 title defenses. Thank you. I'll bring an inflatable pool. (laughs) False. I defeated, actually, 32 other men in a battle royal to win that championship. It's rightfully mine before I lastly defeated El Grio. For those of you who do not speak Spanish, that translates to the cricket (laughs) in the finals to win that championship and bring it back. I mean, are you proud of beating a guy called the Cricket? Well, listen, after I finished him, he was hearing crickets. There was silence. <laughs> I mean, did he jump all over you? He thought he could, and he failed. Just like Chris Slade, the high flyer that he is, is going to fail this weekend as well. Because the only... What if, what if we put a sail on one of the turnbuckles and called and, and a plank on the other turnbuckle? Would that, would, that, would that constitute as a ship and then you could defend your title? The championship is never being defended on a makeshift ship. What do you not understand? What, <laughs> what is it called, Captain up there? It's no, no makeshift, no make I mean, I have an old it's dinghy at the house. Be- yeah. I mean, I could put a pirate flag on it and we'll wrestle on the dinghy. I already have a pirate flag. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it because the title is not getting defended this Saturday night at Outbreak Wrestling. At This is Outbreak at the taping, 6.30 p.m. It's not happening. But the show is the the whole theme of the show is honor. I mean, how honorable would it be to defend your title? Uh, not honorable at all because it completely defeats the purpose of the championship in the first place, which is that the rules are that the title may only be defended on a ship or an island. And granted, Hamburg, Pennsylvania, no matter how disgusting the people in there are, they do not live on an island they just live in disgusting 
nasty little town in Pennsylvania that's riddled with. <clears throat> never mind. I'm going to stop. Does Three <laughs> Mile Island right count? There. I'm going to stop right there. I have nothing <laughs> nice to say about the people of Hamburg. Does Three Mile um, Island count? Mm, it may. It may be worse. <laughs> maybe worse now um, would you defend it against paul birchall you you're just a really funny character huh i suppose i should defend it against john pierre lafitte too huh actually yeah i'd love to see that match <laughs> all right here, here's the thought defend it against tyler ash ed house has had very nice things that to say way. about him tyler ash the man that has the rainbow guy <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see. I would like to see uh, uh, <laughs> the, the the captain versus versus Andy. You first know, manager all, versus manager. First of all, what does Andy Andy Weinberg? Win? Weinberg. Yeah. What does Berg. he have? What does he bring to the table? What he pinned that Red Scorpion guy. Anybody could pin the Red Scorpion. Honestly, I have no clue who the Red Scorpion is, so you got me. Yeah, it was a, a the first Scorpion. indie show. He's a wrestler in Pennsylvania, apparently. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I only saw the Facebook post. I mean, it, Andy said, already got Mr. Sacco. Now he can get that really – I mean, I'm a huge fan of that Infinity Gauntlet, like Freddy Krueger-style claw that, that the captain has. First of all, if you, we want to talk Infinity Gauntlets, then I guess you could say yes. Captain Decapitate is the Thanos of – outbreak wrestling and professional wrestling in general he is the leader of the crew of blood and he rules the roost the crew of blood rules That's what it. would be we one chance and we rule the ring what would be one chance that you wouldn't want to hear from the people at outbreak captain crunch okay so no cap i'll make it a list no captain crunch no captain crunch because if you do there will be consequences okay uh, i was at this nasty little cesspool town with the captain a couple months ago called Riverton, New Jersey, and the official of all, all people called me One-Eyed Willie, and those disgusting fans began <laughs> at me. So one-eyed, all right, so I'm writing Captain Crunch and One-Eyed Willie. Don't ever Listen, say we, we, now, now I've heard stories from a Cowboy and Dirtbag Dan. Is there any truth to the fact that the captain cannot wipe with his right hand? You know what? I, I, I'm not going to tolerate disrespect to my captain on, on this little podcast. I called in to you doing you guys a favor, and I'm not going to tolerate any disrespect towards my captain. So I like the captain. I'm a fan of him. This this is the this is the commentary just going crazy here. Mm. Hey, mm -hmm. That's just a story I heard from the Cowboy and Dirtbag Dan. you got to take it up with them. Yeah, I, I bet you did. Listen, if anybody can't doesn't wipe himself, it's Dirtbag Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I've seen, the, 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 the dirtbag guys have a hard me. time with Mustache Mountain. They need to worry about those guys first, right? Mustache Mountain isn't that a team on NXT? Mustache yeah. Club. Oh, Mustache Club. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mustache Club. I like the Mountain guys better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if you kind of take a, a little mixture of Mustache Club and and the Vod villains and put them together, you get what you get, right? I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> so, Sabal, how much do you pay attention to uh, Monday and Tuesday nights? Mm, as far as, well. Oh, SmackDown, the Superstar Shakeup. What'd you think? Oh, I thought you were talking about wenches for a second. No. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. Monday and Tuesday nights, Superstar Shakeup. Um, fairly decent. Uh, I was expecting uh, the big man, uh, Ron Strowman. I believe his name is. I was expecting him to end up on SmackDown after that encounter with uh, Joe from Samoa. Mm -hmm. Samoa is an island. Would you defend the title against him? Eh, maybe. Maybe. Ooh. He would have to prove himself worthy. Ooh. And I now <laughs> have 46 title defenses, so I'm starting to be very picky and choosy. Not just anyone can get a shot at this title. I've held this championship now for two months and already have 46 defenses. I've been wrestling multiple times, nearly every day on the ship. How many times have you beaten Captain yeah. Jack Sparrow? You know what? The disrespect continues. You want me, you want me, you want me to hang up? I'm going to hang up. I will. 
I would, I would, I, I, I apologize as the host of this show. You know, it is absolute disrespect. You don't Why talk about the captain like that. Somebody with some class. You are a class act, my friend. <laughs> yeah, and oh. now, um, we, we, you know, we talked to a few other superstars, and and we're talking about, you know, obviously supporting your local local scene and supporting your local guys and coming out and seeing the show and having a good time. Uh, merch wise, what should we look for for you? Is is there anything out there that we can do to support support the uh, Sabal Del Mar merchandise? Yeah. Well, God, uh, apparently, nothing at the moment, but there is some things in the works. Perfect. And uh, just stay tuned. That's all I'll say. Just well, stay tuned. I, I, I some, enjoy I enjoy every cool show stuff. to try to support a local guy on the on the on the, in, on the indie scene. Today I'm wearing my. He, he's actually he's going to be on the Outbreak show. Uh, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Vex, yes. So I'm, I saw I'm, his. Uh, I saw his match card. Uh, he's from Hawaii. Does he get Hawaii. the title shot? Oh, he's on an island. He is. He's from Hawaii. Tommy Vex isn't even a real Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen him? Have you Have you looked in the mirror? He looks like a redneck that maybe went to Hawaii and surfed a couple times. Have you ever seen Dog the Bounty Hunter? I mean, that is a, a fair point. Yeah, Dog the Bounty Hunter, who looks like the disciple, aka Ed <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> From the NWO. <laughs> no, thank you. Was there anyone on the Superstar Shakeup that you were shocked that moved over? Um, let me think. That I was shocked that moved over. Not really, I guess. Elias but... on SmackDown, the number one pick for SmackDown. Finn Balor. Finn Balor to SmackDown. I, Finn Balor and, oh, and you know Ali. I, will say, I was surprised by that because now they have. The Intercontinental and U.S. belt. I was going to bring that up because now right. both secondary championships are on SmackDown. See, I feel like the Superstars shakeup is not over. I think it's going to be a couple weeks long because, you know, you couldn't put them all on one show. And they didn't really do it like a draft. So I think see, that's why I liked when they did the draft, because at least on draft night, it kept going after the show was over and people still swapped. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think you're going to see a couple weeks of, of Monday. So of, of Raw either the United States champions coming over to Raw or... Finn Balor is going to lose the title, and somebody's coming over to Raw. Yeah, yeah. Or they're going to have him face somebody from Raw and drop the title at the next show. Yeah, next show money in the bank. bank. Money yeah. in the bank, maybe. Yeah. So, if you had to pick your winner for Money in the Bank, your personal favorite, who's it going to be? For me, the brand, right? Um. Oh, my personal favorite. Who would you I like think? to see win Money in the Bank? Oh. I'm a big fan of Andrade. Yeah, I like Andrade, but I, I my my pick for Money in the Bank this year is going to be the Miz. I just think you know every single time a superstar re- wrestles Shane McMahon at a WrestleMania, he tends to get a nice push for the title. That's true. That's true. Uh, Kevin Owens, I think, is another one. I love Kevin Owens. I actually, I so I've been looking for a Kevin Owens shirt for a long time. Now my plan is to lose weight. So I ordered a shirt that's normally not my size with the hopes of losing it so I can wear it. But I found the Kevin Owens duct tape first NXT shirt on eBay for nine dollars, and I ordered it. Cheaper than the network. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a huge Kevin Owens fan. Just maybe because we're both chubby. He's the sacrifices sometimes we have to make. Yeah, I gotta lose weight now because I want to wear that Kevin Owens shirt. <laughs> Is it in medium? It's a large. Mm. So I'm only I only wear an extra large, so it's not too much of a stretch. Now, Sabal, when you're doing your merchandise, are they coming in like tank tops, halter tops? Um, I usually only have the tank top for, my, for myself. Maybe an eye patch? I may have those at this show. Ooh. Ooh. I may. All right. Well, listen, we'll, we'll definitely support that, and we'll uh, we'll hook you up with some stickers and uh, for our podcast that we just made, and we thank you so much for – got to get them changed. Uh, for calling in. Oh, yeah, we got to – well, you can have them because they're exclusive now because uh, because we did change the name. The name didn't get changed, unfortunately. That The big call came in, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All um, right. I will see you guys Saturday, Saturday, Saturday we'll, night. We'll yeah. see you Saturday. And we'll – listen – we have we bring a big crowd and our crowd does get very ruckus and we we start they 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 are tend to starting a lot of chance. Um, mm-hmm. We will make sure that that one eyed Willie and Captain Crunch is not chanted. You better. You better. We'll make. I'll make sure. I'll make sure. I'll come out there in the crowd with you. 
and there's this other show. You know what I like, you podcasters? There's this other show, these people, these disgusting people in West from West Virginia that are coming to this show, and I'm, I, I don't want to have to hurt four podcasters in one day, but I will. What's what's their what's their podcast? This disgusting, filthy podcast called The Hub Show. Hug or doing, hub? Hub. H U B. Who have been doing nothing but disrespecting the great Captain Decapitate all over Facebook, all over the internet, and they've been calling me out. I don't even know these these people, but they've been calling me out saying they're going to be there on April twentieth. If anybody wants to see a massacre, either in the parking lot or out in the crowd, I do see. I, I'm looking here at their oh, Instagram, boy. and it says it's just too sweet. And they and he, he has his hand in a bag of Captain Crunch. Oh man! Really? Is it at least yeah. Crunchberries? And he tagged you. He ta- I'm actually I'm giving you a follow right now. Yeah, he's he's eating Crunchberries and he Whoa. he tagged you. That's oh the disrespect. I mean, just regular Rick. Captain Crunch is disrespectful, but the Crunchberries. And he tagged the captain. Ooh. Oh God! Look at the captain. Disrespectful, absolutely disrespectful. They, the captain made a specialized, a special <laughs> appearance. No, no. Tell me if I'm wrong, but this picture I'm looking at right now, it's the crew of blood, but why does it look like Dirtbag Dan has his hand up to the hand of which the captain does not have? What looks like a piece of toilet paper in it. Uh, I would have to see what photo you're referring to. That's on Captain Captain's Instagram. Yes. All right, I'm looking. Let me find it real quick. I think somebody's embellishing with the uh, with the toilet paper. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <he's... laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, that picture was taken. That picture was taken on uh, in February. That same disgusting show in Riverton, New Jersey, where those people called me One-Eyed Willie. But guess what? I won that match. Hey, so, One-Eyed Willie was a good movie. Who are the re- who are the real suckers here? Right. I mean, if you're winning, exactly. you can't say much, right? And it, it, every, every show I go to, you walk out on top. Well, all right. Let's not lie now. <laughs> I mean, he didn't win the Battle Royal. All right. We don't need to go down and list them all. I just agreed with them. I just uh, disagreed with All right. Maybe you don't go on top when it comes to the win and loss column, but you lo- yeah. normally leave the show on top of, you know, on top. You know, you, you, the crew may come out and involve something, or you may come back out later, and you usually get the upper hand. Absolutely, and you know something, uh, that prick Robbie Radke and that nasty little friend of his, Killian McMurphy, I haven't forgotten about that, about getting screwed. Because let's be honest. I mean, in all honesty, Catharsis won the battle royal. Who should have won that match? Me. Yeah. It's a bold no ma. So, in essence, when you think about it. Who should be facing Andy Hedda this Saturday night? But instead, you put me in on the pre-show, the pre-show ugh, against that disgusting, nasty little cornrow dreadlock, one hanging down in front of his face while the rest is pulled back into a ponytail. Chris Slade, instead of in the Outbreak Championship match. There's there's so many there's so many matches this weekend that really can can shape the ship the sh- shape the uh the the imp the, the you know the shape the um the scene of what can happen with the title i mean we talked about ian bush versus um dame oh, with ian you bush. your match because obviously you were you were a finalist in that battle royal um and, and there's a lot of different things that can happen here this weekend yep and you know ian bush is another one he's oh the man is so loud and so are his his followers. followers. Yeah, his followers are allowed. The shows. They, they, chanting baby face, baby face. They were actually oh. chanting during the Dame and Andy match, which, uh, you know, Ian wasn't even a part of. And they were like, Ian should have been a part of this. And, I mean, I made I, I made a chant. I said, who's that guy? But, you know, he did prove himself. So I, I maybe I ate my words a little bit. Listen, I'm, I, I have to say that Ian Bush and I have faced off twice. And each time he's cheated to win. Certainly wasn't because of my cheating, because I don't cheat. You ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah. The captain and I be just be two honest pirates trying to make a living now in the professional wrestling world, and we're just misunderstood. That's all it is. We're misunderstood. We're not bad people. 
we're good people. We go out there, we high five the children, we high five <laughs> the adults or the marks as we call it. We high five everybody. We go out there, we respect officials that respect us, not like that Lance Frazier guy, aka the bald guy referee from Outbreak. No. Because he disrespects us. Day in and day out. Look at that. Look at the tag team match from February. He did not want to count that three for the Cowboy to get that win over the Mustache Club. And guess who had to raise their hands? Me. Yeah. Because the crew of blood is one united with the filthy family. Together, it's Sabal Del Mar, a.k.a. the Demon of the Deep. It's the Dirtbag, Dirtbag Dan. It's Big Cal Stevens. It's Prince Shongo. It's led by the greatest pirate to have ever walked this earth. David Jones? Captain Decapitate. Oh, no. oh, oh, wrong one. Sorry. Captain Decapitate. That's but uh, we're going we're gonna to end it there. Uh, you might really? have to go swab the poop deck because of Dirtbag Dan, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to meeting you in Tortuga, and we'll spend a line of grog. It's possible the no quarter given tour continues this weekend. Don't All right, miss. listen, I, I look forward to getting a picture with you and the captain this weekend. Absolutely. All right, see you then, brother. All right, see Go home. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> phone calls tonight. Yes, really. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, let's recap here. We had uh, Mad Max Morrison. Mad Max Morrison. We had Ed House. The brute force of bro force. Yeah. We had the maniacal DB Craft. DB Craft, and now we just got Sabal. Um Outbreak in full force tonight. I want to know how all these assholes got my phone number. I mean, you talk a lot. Do you talk a lot of shit in that commentary table? <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, uh, we. I call it like I see it. I'm a very fair commentator. So, all right. So if if we had to compare you to what we what we watch on Mondays and Tuesdays, are you a Corey Graves? Are you more of a uh, Michael Cole? Can I put them together? I mean, I, I call it pretty straight, but I do give I do give the hard facts when it's needed. Nah, I, I, we'll, we'll let you go on that one. Um, I don't really, I don't. Do you have anybody else queued up, or is that is that it for the phone calls tonight? I think we have one more. One more. Okay. Um, match wise, let's uh, what, until until we get a, a phone call here. Um, what else do we got to look forward to? We talked a little about Tommy uh, Vex. Who's Tommy Vex going against? Tommy Vex and the Cash Masters against Riot City in the semifinals of the Bad Street Tournament. I'm a Tommy Vex guy. Uh, obviously, as you see, I'm a Tommy Vex guy. I actually might be wearing my Tommy Vex shirt Saturday. I'm not even washing it. That's all. I, now, scumbag. Go now, hang out with Dirtbag Dan. Now, to be fair, I literally just put this on for the podcast, I so know. it's not going to be super dirty. So if you see me at the show, I'll be like, oh, I mean, I scumbag. might be wearing this. I mean, this. Well, oh, wait, wait. I love this. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so maybe somebody else will wear that to the ring. Maybe. I mean, but we can't. Uh, this is all I can show right now because yeah, apparently kind of, this is what our name is now. Yeah, it's just it's out of control. I, I can't control who. I who, can't who say, called. I can't say who called. Obviously, I mean, if you use your imagination, you'll you'll know that it's God just, damn it, Anthony. God, God damn it! <laughs> when you get a name, you use it. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, two phone calls. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, boss. I got to put you on hold. Who do I know in Maryland? Go, no, just answer that because the music. <laughs> Hello. The time has Woo! come because the winner is here. Uh, <laughs> this is this is probably my favorite call of the night. I'm not going to lie. I will be your favorite call of the we, night. But let me tell you something. The two of you sit in the kitchen. Talking to oh, guy his kitchen. A his kitchen. Show. Now, come on. We I showed you love last time. We were we were buddies last time we talked. Where we are buddies. Where's my sweatshirt? <laughs> I have. I, I will we'll have be it there Saturday. Show. I have it all ready for gonna, you. I'm gonna. We're gonna take a picture with the sweatshirt. I'll tell now, you what, Mr. Weinberg, are you currently watching? Am I watching? I I need a bigger screen with the two of you. you what do you think of our brand new exclusive? Sure. So we got we got a we got a tornado tag um, that kind of looks similar to the WrestleMania tornado logo. Tornado Mania. Tornado Mania. Yeah, that shirt. might be some copyright infringement there, boys. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we uh, we adjusted some things. With yeah, that. we tweaked it. 
we, we avoided all of that in all possibilities. So I may have, I may I have. I think you guys need tents for shirts the way you guys are getting. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not arguing that at all. You guys no. are sitting in the kitchen. You're talking to guys on some jabroni on a pre-show. And now the winner calls. Now the night is complete. Well, apparently he called you the jabroni for beating somebody who we've never heard of. And right. That's what I do. Beat people that never heard, never heard anybody ever there. Come now, on, now. Show. Now that I'm on the phone with you, with I mean, a, with he, a fake, with by the way, fake British accent. <laughs> <laughs> now you're you're you had a, a little bit of a rivalry with a few people lately. Um, one of them you also made fun of their weight, but uh, he he looked like he got handled by somebody on Monday Night Raw a couple weeks ago. He's talking about Fat Boy Brandon Scott. <laughs> yes, <laughs> his girlfriend's as fat as him. <laughs> She's a big. She barks like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so can we can we pause for a minute here and can we reset? What is your beef with this man? With Brandon Scott? Yes. Help There's fill in the blanks here for anybody show. who might not know. Well, let me talk about this, okay? I'm talking about um, this incorporates everything about the winner. There's two types of people in this world. 99.43% of the world are losers. Okay. It's very true. The, I'm not gonna deny that. Anger, are winners i despise losers i don't like losers especially the fans of outbreak wrestling i might even bring my lawyer this time because if anyone calls me any type of name now we have I'll hold on suit. we have what? a list we have a list i i kind of got the list from also sabal of things that we're, we don't want the crowd to chant so i, I try don't want to hear it you can do it when i'm off the air you can do this okay? you don't want to hear fruit I loop fruity stop. Pebble. i'll hang up on you right now <laughs> i i will put that on i'll the list. hang up on you right now and i will go on facebook and bury your podcast if you don't stop oh Publicity is good publicity. Yeah. No, you don't want publicity <laughs> from the winner. Sand tonight, socks? Believe me. But I, I'll I'll, I'm I'm a fan of the winner. I want to become a winner. Well, we got to work on you. You got to lose some weight first. All right, mm-hmm. I will work on it. I will got to get. I got to get out of the kitchen. I I bought DDP yoga. I'm going to work really hard. Well, it's one thing to buy; it's another to do it. I hope you start doing it. I, I got to start doing it. You're right. <laughs> That's your homework assignment. But let me tell you this: so Brandon Scott's a loser. He's never won the MCW Heavyweight Championship. Andy Weinberg manages Ryan McBride in MCW, a three-time champion. I took Sean Studd from being a loser, turned him into a champion. That's the son of Big John Studd. Turned him into a winner. What I've done: I've managed greatness. I managed. I took King McBride. He became a Rage TV champion. Brandon Scott, loser. Never won anything. And that's why we don't like each other. Mm. Plain and simple. So who in Outbreak are you going to bring up the ranks here? Oh, you wait to see what happens at Outbreak. We're going to – I got my winners. I got my winners. You just wait and see what happens. Last time I saw you had Tyler Ash and – the debonair Kurt Blair. Yeah. And and I got somebody else here too. And a poor girl got her face broke. Yeah. What's that? Oh, that poor girl. Yeah. That slap hurt all around Pennsylvania, Ooh, right? That was a, that oh, was a devastating I, I, I hope breaker. I see her again because I'll slap her again. She doesn't belong in a wrestling sh- ring. She belongs with you guys sitting in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> in the, in our kitchen, right? Now, yeah, um, I did see, I did see some, I, I follow you on social media and I see, uh, you know, the, the one guy you were, you're managing, he didn't do very well. Um, and, 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 uh, you got to meet Mick Foley. Listen, I've known Mick Foley since I was 14 years old, believe it or not. Mick Foley is no doubt a hardcore legend. He's a three time WWE heavyweight champion, but he also lost that belt three times. That makes him a three time loser. Now, would you okay. would you qualify Mick, Ric Flair as a sixteen time loser? Hundred percent. I'll tell it right to his face. I don't I, care. I agree with him. I agree. Mick Foley is. You think he's a, you know you think he's known for being so hardcore, for being the most you know brutal man that's ever set foot in the ring. Biggest thing he's ever done. Mick Foley invented the toothbrush. Did you know that? I did not. Anybody else that would have invented it would have been called a teeth brush. <laughs> Yeah, that does make a lot of sense. Mick Foley smells. He wears pajamas to the ring. He wears a fanny pack. I mean, fanny pack. Who wears a fanny pack? People haven't worn a fanny pack 
since 1993. And that's the last time that Mick Foley's been relevant anyway. I mean, in so, all honesty, the fanny pack has been making a pretty big comeback in the last two yeah, years. Yeah, no. May, maybe to maybe to guys that are opening up shows. Maybe the pre-show guys are wearing them. Pre-show guys. Andy I don't Bonder know. Uh, Dame Smith wears one. I he was the main event last packs. week, last show. I hate Who? Dame Smith wears one, and he was the main event of the last show. Well, I'll tell you what. Damian Smith needs to get out of 1985 and come into 2019 because I'll knock some sense into him. There's a difference between winners and losers, just like I told you earlier. And I despise fanny packs. I despise fat women. I despise <laughs> – why are you laughing about that? And, <laughs> and, and I despise losers. I listen. I I I need the. I need. Do you have a book I can buy so I can definitely? I want to work on myself. I want to get. I want to get in the winner's circle. Well, you got to start with DDP Yoga. You bought the thing probably two years ago. You haven't even started using it. I, you're right. You're right. I, six months ago. Six months ago. You're you're hundred percent right. You get. You're kicking me in the butt. I need to. I need to get on it. You got to get on the game. I'm sitting here right now. Get ready to have my B and B protein shake. For those of you that don't know what that is, that's the best protein that money can buy. I encourage all wrestling fans to get on and find out on Facebook, BNB, just the letters, protein. That's one of my buddy's businesses, and I encourage everybody to get on there and get on the protein and winning wagon. The winning wagon. I love it, brother. Now, Andy, all things aside, putting everything aside, is there anything else you'd like to plug? Some merchandise, like your brother's BNB protein, anything else like you know, personally you'd like out, to plug? I, I don't go out there and sell merchandise because I, and this is a hundred percent truth. And I hope wrestling fans are listening to me right now. I, I know what wrestlers do. They go out during intermission. They want their pictures with the fans to post on social media. They want to sit there and shake hands and kiss babies. Andy Weinberg has nothing to promote except the winner, Andy Weinberg and the winner circle that I have. You can see us at the Hamburg Fieldhouse this Saturday night, April 20th. If you fans come there, like I said, and you want to get in my face and say things to me, I dare you to say it. I will call my lawyer. You will have a lawsuit against you. There is no reason for me to ever set foot, to ever sell T-shirts. You know what? As much as I like money, and believe me, Andy Weinberg likes money, there is no reason for me to walk out there. Nobody could pay me enough money to walk out Shake hands, kiss babies, and sit in your kitchen with the two fat so that you are. <laughs> hey, now. Now, all honesty, Andy, how long have you been a manager in wrestling or been involved in wrestling? Well, this is a little history. Since you guys asked it, I usually don't tell too many. But since you asked, I'll tell you this. Andy Weinberg's been involved in wrestling since he was 14 years old, believe it or not. That's, I'm 45, so you guys do the math, okay? Now, man, I, I worked for the original. You can go watch the video. Those go on the WD network. You can go see me many times on the original ECW. We'll talk about that another day. I was there for seven years as one of Paul Heyman's right hand men. I learned from the best and I definitely took the knowledge I learned from Paul Heyman. And about three or four years ago, I started becoming a manager. I wanted to get the on, on air talent, not behind the camera. And here I am today, hands down. I don't care what anybody says match anybody against me. I am the greatest professional wrestling manager on the independent wrestling scene today, bar none. Now, I, I would agree with that. Now, you've been doing this well over 25 years, correct? Not as a manager. I manage only about four or five years. That's it. Now, in your entirety, I know this is breaking kayfabe, and in your entirety, who has been one of the nicest guys in a locker room you have ever met and you have not a bad thing to say about this man or woman? Well, so here's another fact about me, guys. I'll tell you a little, I'm going to take you behind the curtain, if you will. The best influence I ever had in my life, I didn't have the greatest upbringing coming up in this world. But when I was 14 years old, I met a man that happens to be a WWE Hall of Famer. A lot of people that know me personally know my story and they know who I'm going to say right now. And that's none other than Nikolai Volkov. He took me under his wing when I was 14 years old. He had two daughters. I was the son he never had took me in so everything that i have today everything that i've accomplished today everything that i know today is hands down i give credit to nikolai Volkov. god rest his soul he was a great man i got to meet him one time at uh i want to say it was an axw or an outbreak show i can't remember it was an axw show at axw the right House. But you know why i know because i brought him up there with me 
I, I got to shake his hand. I got to talk to him for about five minutes and I great guy. I have no complaints. He actually took the time out of his autograph session to kind of perk me up to what the business is. Like, Nikolai was I, I'm more man than I am. I didn't want, I won't shake hands with wrestling fans. I refuse to do it. I refuse to do it. I don't want to be around them. hundred percent truth. 100% fact. Wrestling fans happen to be the most filthy. I have to have sanitizer in my bag. And if you don't believe me, come backstage on Saturday night and look at Andy Weinberg's suitcase and see what the first thing you'll see is that's hand sanitizer. Nikolai Volkov didn't care about shaking hands and hugging losers. Andy Weinberg does care about those things. Now, that's the one difference. Does your suitcase match the suit? Does my suitcase match the suit? Let me tell you something. My suitcase probably costs more than your entire wardrobe. Good possibility. Uh, no, it's looking at you right now. It's definitely a possibility. Oh, that's a dirty hat. That is a dirty. You hat. could you could not be on the winner's circle with that dirty hat. You guys couldn't be in the winner's circle with anything you I've guys got have. Six trophies under this hat says otherwise. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Probably got no hair under that hat. But that's I mean, what's going on, hair. guys. <laughs> he, got, he, got you there. he got you there. I do shave it. He's got now, a point. Now, I, talking. We do like to talk all things pro wrestling. There's there's a guy who just made his comeback. Um, and he's kind of has a very similar views to you where he's sick of the wrestling business, sick of the fans and sick of their entitlement. Uh, Sammy Zayn, what do you think about his thoughts on wrestling? Yeah, just, you know what? Sammy Zayn needed a, to be refreshed. Sammy Zayn didn't have the it behind him. That's why Andy Weinberg comes into companies and I could turn things around for people. Basically, they're all stealing what Andy Weinberg's doing right now. I would agree with that. 100%. You know what? And the one thing Sammy Zayn doesn't have is the charisma that Andy Feinberg could bring to Sammy? You know what? For the longest time, I always said we were we were talking about WrestleMania and the lead up and the Royal, especially the Royal Rumble. And I said to people, I said, you know what? I'm not excited for Royal Rumble, which is my favorite pay per view of the year. And the reason I'm not excited is because WWE is going to do the biggest cop out in wrestling history, and they're going to listen to the fans. They're, the, the fans are going to cry and bitch and complain and boohoo and say if we don't get what we like we're gonna go to aew and be their fans and the wwe bought a hook line and sinker then they went to mania and they gave ex the fans exactly what they wanted there and Sami Zayn came out and said you're all a bunch of people that if you don't you cry and get what you want if you don't like it you're you boohoo and and that's kind of what sammy's getting at he's 100 percent accurate you know but he's scripted the difference between him and a, like a guy like cm punk is He'll go off, you know, topic and go off script and he'll speak his mind and he'll drop the mic and do what he has to do. I am the same exact way. I'm not afraid to say what's on my mind. I have nothing to lose. So you 100 percent agree that Sami Zayn's entire comment over Monday and Tuesday was just straight pre-written shoots. Pre-written shoots. That's all it was. If you put Andy Weinberg in there, you take the pre-written out and you're getting nothing but shoots. I love it. And All right. Saturday night, you're going to get Andy Weinberg to shoot on the crowd of those fans that outbreak wrestling. Well, we we wait. We have Ooh. our list. We have our list, and we will, I will I will personally make sure that those fans don't chant those terrible things to you. If anybody chants anything at me, your lawyer's on standby. Me, I may either leave. I may sue. I may, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, they 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 chanted songs to you when they when they. Uh, when, the, when you left, they were happy about it. They're sick people. What does that tell you? And I'll tell you what, as, as someone who's responsible for the podcast, I, you know, I, I met a gentleman in the parking lot and I gave him a free admission in. I gave him front row ticket. And I didn't know that guy was going to harass you the way he did. Was that limo guy? Yeah. That limo guy. Let me tell you about limo guy. That guy is so, he, he's a, he's a terrible human being. I was just trying to get my podcast out there, be a nice person, give somebody a front row ticket, and he harassed you. If limo guy shows up this Saturday night, he needs to get escorted. That's a man, limo guy. Limo guy. The guy doesn't use toilet paper after a bowel movement. Have Ooh. you ever sat Ooh. next to the guy? Why are you laughing about this? I'm being very, very honest here, guys. I'm glad I was sitting next to Gotti. So Gotti's not much better. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, okay? Gotti's not much better, but I like Gotti. He's a mafia guy. I like him. But this guy, limo guy, he he's he smells. He's the guy that his toothbrush sprays at night. He's stupid. He's the same guy. I know him from day one. He's the same guy that tries to put his M&Ms in alphabetical order. The guy is the complete, utter, full 
loser. His cousin, I won't even get into him. You know about his cousin, Paisan? No, I haven't heard about him. He calls him Pistol on Weinberg. He's a sick man. Oh, where do you where do you meet him? I'll tell you this what. If he, if he shows deported. up, if he shows up, I will I will definitely get outbreak security on that. No, we'll no, him. no. If he shows up, you let me know. I'll we'll get Donald Trump's people to deport him immediately. All right. He's an he's an illegal immigrant. Is what he is. We'll take care of that. Now, real quick before we wrap, let's transition from Andy the manager to Andy the wrestling fan. Monday and Tuesday we had the superstar shake up. I'm not sure if you saw, but were you happy, upset with any of the moves or that you saw? Um, I, I was happy about Finn Balor going over to SmackDown. I think that'll be refreshing for him. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be uh, Roman Reigns. I think SmackDown needed that. You know, they need a little jolt there. Elias is, you know, I, th- I like Elias on Raw. I thought that was just because he's such a Raw talent. I think he belongs on Monday nights, but it is what it is, and we'll see what happens. Um, a- AJ think- moving to Raw is good because he cleaned out that whole division. Yeah, AJ's good over there. So I think it was a good move. They need to do that once in a while, but I saw the ratings were down, but – what are you going to do? And yeah. now you have both the secondary titles on SmackDown. How do you take the Intercontinental title or the United States title and move it over? Well, I can guarantee you right now Samoa Joe will be on Raw. I would say it's, I think they're going to through the next couple of weeks they're going to they're going to they're going to be more moves. There'll definitely be more moves. You'll see Samoa Joe on Raw. Yeah, I would agree. Well, Andy, thank you so much. And you know what? I'm going to get off and this you'll podcast. You'll see the winner. The uh, winner. I'm gonna Saturday get off this night. podcast. I'm gonna get my yoga mat out. We're gonna get the D. I'm gonna get the DDP going because I want to be in that winner circle. And I will see you, sir, Saturday. With your with my sweatshirt. With with your sweatshirt. Didn't they have a T-shirt too? No, just a sweatshirt. Just a sweatshirt. Yep. Too cheap for a T-shirt. Uh, too All cheap right. for a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the support to the podcast, and we really appreciate it. And uh, and we'll Keep see you up Saturday. The good work, and you one day maybe you'll be winners. Uh, well, I'm 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 shooting for it. you. Know what? I already seen our likes have gone through the roof since you came on here. What do you expect? I, I expect anything else. Thank you so but, much, and we'll see you Saturday. Thanks, Andy. See you later. See you then. Take care. All right. Well, we're gonna end on that note. Oof, wow. Um, great show. If you're not excited, what for do you a, mean? Great show! It was a great. We have show. to rebrand everything. No, no, we're not doing it. No, we're not. You know what? The bot. He, he tried to call and I ignored him because I wasn't going to sit here and allow the the guy who's just been changing our names all show. God damn it! To 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 be interrupted by the winner. I mean, Answer I, your phone. You know what? Don't know. Hello. Oh. I'm going to tell you what. You can do what you want. I just talked to the winner, Andy Weinberg, and I'm going to do what the hell I want. You need to stop fucking with us and stop messing with our names. We're going back to Tornado Tag Podcast. And if you don't like it, then you're fired. Nailed it. <laughs> no, we're back. No, you you did not just. We're on our own terms. We're not we're not bought out by anybody. We're not going to sit here and say that one show is better than another because we're owned by somebody. We go. We do our own opinions here. We're fired. We are we are our own bosses. After listening to the winner, we are going to become winners. After You're going to grow hair. I'm going to get skinny, and we're, we're doing gonna it. Get skinny. We're going to do it together, Andy. That's for you, brother. But on this note, I think we had a pretty good show tonight. We had a lot of great call-ins, a lot of good insight to the professional wrestling world. If you're not excited for Outbreak this Saturday, you're crazy. Absolutely. Huge thank you to uh, to, to Mad Max. Ed House. Ed House. DB Craft. DB Craft. Sabal Del Mar. Sabal Del Mar. And the winner, Andy Viber. And the winner, Andy Viber. You guys have been amazing. And you know what? I know I'm chubby, Andy. I'm going to work on it for you, brother. Let's get it going. Uh, Great sweet. podcast. We will see you Saturday night. The TTP crew will be there in full effect getting the general admission whoa, tickets. Whoa, whoa. You guys will be in the stands. We'll be in the stands. He'll be working. TTP crew will be in the stands. Um, now, just recap. We, we will not get any chance going with Captain Crunch, One-Eyed Willie, Fruit, Fruit Loops, Loops, Fruity Pebbles, Fruity Pebbles, Toucan Sam. Toucan Sam. They will not happen. I'm not on my watch. I will not say Toucan Sam, Fruity Pebbles, Fruit Loop, One-Eyed Willie. It will not happen on our watch. All right. You heard it here. We'll see you Saturday night. Outbreak Wrestling Honor for an amazing cause, by Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. Honor Ama- for autism. Yes. And it, all, all proceeds go to a local um, autism fund foundation. So everything you go there is going to be amazing. Um, and if you have anything else going there that's going to go towards that cause, donate a couple bucks, support your local wrestlers, buy some merch, and we'll see you guys Saturday. If you see us, come up to us, tell us you like the podcast, and we got free stickers for you. And for Andy Hedder who's not here. Good luck, buddy. You're going to win that title. <laughs>